What's up guys, welcome back. Today I've got an episode for you today for doing a little bit of wiring. Um, since it's really cold and crappy outside today, I figured it'd be a good day to tackle this uh, coil harness for the turbo build. Um, the reason being is, as most of you OBD2 guys know, which I've already got the plastic removed for here, but when you have the turbo here, you have to usually run the downpipe right along it here. And this connector sits pretty close to where you're gonna have your downpipe. In my case, it actually comes out right next to it. So what I'm gonna do today is actually take all this wiring and try to relocate it to the top here, um, just to avoid uh, burning any wires or at least lessen it because the coils and some of the wiring still doesn't move, but it gets it away from the turbo even more. Um, as you saw in a previous video, the heat shield or heat wrap um, that I put on the downpipe should help some of that, but just as another precaution, I'm gonna be putting all this wiring up top here, um, cleaning it up a bit, little bit, because as you can see, it's kind of spaghetti in here uh, when you take the black covers off. But And the cover that I have that you've seen in other videos that goes over my coils, um, goes over this part right here. So I'll actually have a nice opening to where I can run this plug out of it um, as far as I need to, to meet up with the factory um, location for the coil harness. Uh, plug for the other side of this so um, what I'll have to be doing is snipping all these wires now they are all color-coded excuse me just went outside real quick I'm I'm sniffling but all these wires are color-coded so each one has the brown ground it has a green or yeah well it's got a brown a green and then a black wire all the black wires have a specific color stripe on it, so each of these coils will be easy to trace out which one goes where once I cut this part because, excuse me just a second, I need to blow my nose. All right, sorry about that. So all of these black wires all have a specific color for each coil on here. So like I was saying, as you snip this harness for this plug, um, you'll be able to easily trace where they go um, when you connect it back to this once you actually have routed them over top here. Um, so what I have is I parted out a car a couple years ago, so I have plenty of this wiring laying around. Now, none of it's going to be color coordinated, but as I was saying, the end that's connected to the coil and your coil connector to the main body harness, um, will still be the same. Plus I'm going to heat shrink and wrap all of this stuff. So you won't even see it. So being able to trace those wires, you'll still be able to from where the coil wiring and the body connector comes out will be the same still. So this, like I said, just from a car I parted out about a little over a foot, I think. Um, so I'll be able to use that to extend all these wires. Uh, once I extend the wires, I've got not only a whole pack of heat shrink tubes so I can do it as I go, but also this nice black looming that you can slip over it. Um, and then you can put all your zip ties and stuff like that to clean it up real nicely. So it'll tuck in here, it'll look real nice. It'll be functional, it'll keep all your stuff away from uh, the turbo and getting melted, which this is actually the old cover. As you can see, it got pretty toasty there, all the bubbles and stuff along it. So that's the turbo end, so that was actually down on this side of the valve cover. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna start cutting up this harness, uh, keeping as much of this wiring as I can. Obviously you wanna keep a bit of length coming out of this connector here so that when you do connect all this back up, you have plenty. If you mess up, you can cut it back and reattach it um, if your solder doesn't stick or what, what have you. But also, another important thing to point out, this ground that usually goes to the uh, ground stud right here in between the second and third coil has a resistor in there so you gotta make sure you maintain that so that will also be wrapped up in here this will probably get relocated to this back one that also has a ground stud um, just to um, keep with the flow because it will all be flowing this way I don't want to have a wire going back the opposite direction of all your coils so um, I can do that and then I will also be using the the brackets usually get on the M50 between the coils in between all of these. So they're all nice and connected to that ground as well. So 
Like I said, I'm gonna start cutting up this harness and then I'll be back in just a second. All right, so as you can see, I kept the junctions intact. I kept everything that goes into um, this harness, just connected as it is. So where all of your grounds or Actually, I'm not sure what the green and brown wires are, but they're all green and brown going to each coil. So, um, kept those the same so you can just hook all those coils back up. doesn't matter which one you hook it up to because they're all going to a common location where that junction is. But then, like I was saying, all these wires are all black, but they have the tracers on them. So, you have a white one, a red one, a yellow one, a purple one, a blue one, and a green one so like I said on the coils they have the corresponding colors as well so you don't need to worry too much about where they go um, or matching them back up as you run your wiring around so um, I'll cut a couple more pieces um, as you can see all these coils are all now separated they all have different lengths of wire which is fine because I'm gonna end up routing it so Keeping as much of this wire as possible is going to be the best because then you don't have to use as much of your filler wire or extension wire, whatever you want to call it. So all these will definitely help. If you need to cut some, you can, um, but all these, like I said, are all individual. So, but one more thing to mention, make sure you lay these out where they go before you cut. Um, just so when you wire it back up, you're not accidentally swapping uh, your firing order unknowingly. Like I said, I laid these all on here before I cut so I know which one's what. I can also mark all these coils and the connectors just so I have that information also. So, but I will start uh, cutting out sections of wire and soldering it in. Um, I've got my snap-on um, soldering iron here along with some vice grip uh, strippers. These are super nice. Uh, you can get these a few different places. I got these off of Amazon if I remember right. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but definitely worth the money because you don't have to struggle with this guy trying to figure out what size it is. This automatically does it for you. So, so much easier. So, give me just a second. I'm going to start routing these a little bit just loosely um, just to see where I need to put all these wires because like I said, this needs to come all the way over here. Um, so I'll probably just run it so the boot is right there. And then again, this ground right here will just be going right here. So I may shorten that up a little bit and resolder it. So I'll see you in just a second. got this first coil done um, I didn't want to do all these individually because it'll just make it easier later um, so as you can see here the sheathing I have is a little bit longer than um, the wiring which is not a big deal later I'll be able to pull it over it um, but on this end you can kind of see it maybe uh, I've got a black zip tie down here just to hold it on this end so once all this is in place and I've got all these other coils uh, done the same way um, then I'll be able to zip tie all those together with some black zip ties so it'll be one um, nice harness that will just be tucked down here like so and then we'll just have this guy I'll get it untangled from this looming <clears throat> down here coming out of this so all that wire will deviate right here so then once that's done I'll also have some bigger sheath I can put over some of it uh, right here. So we'll have five more of these to do just like this. And then once that's done, like I said, I can use these little black zip ties as if tie them all together. It'll be real nice looking real clean. It also keeps all your wires sorted, but so give me just a second. I'll finish all those up. All right. And you can see from the mess, it was a really fun uh, time doing this. But anyways, you can see, like I said, that 
connector came out right here and then all of your wires were all strung across here all the way across so what i decided to do is run everything up through here and down here and then this will have to ground um, on the ground bolt right there but got your connector and then all your electrical stuff is all moved away from the hot um downpipe it's usually like right here so um it is pretty late it's like 10 30 11 o'clock at night um these are actually coils off the car um just because i don't have another set currently so um in the morning i will put these back in um and show you how it all fits on the car and actually hook it up to the harness because i haven't actually been able to do that yet because it doesn't fit properly but as you can see, I still need a little bit of tape. There's a couple things that I would like to redo over, but oh well. It'll function for the time being, and then eventually I'll redo this or something, but we'll see you in the morning. All right, guys, so it's Thanksgiving morning now. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, but I'm going to continue putting this new coil harness back on here. Uh, as I was pointing out before, uh, the harness originally comes out about right here where the downpipe is. So this will actually reroute it so it comes out the back here. Um, and then it just has to plug into that harness right there. So it should be real easy to get it to that point and then plug it directly into that. So um, I will go ahead and remove this, uh, start getting all the coils laid out and everything, and then start routing that harness. Um, as you can see, uh, let me take you off here real quick so you can get a closer look. Um, as you can see, it's real nice and tidy. It's all underneath those coil brackets, so it holds it down what, pretty nicely so that it doesn't come up or rub it up against the cover or anything like that once it's on. Um, I will have to push this down just a little bit to get the cover on. But like I said, it'll end up running out the back of the cover there. Um, but you can see plenty of clearance to the downpipe now. There's no uh, harness sitting directly under it. So you got all the ground straps on, everything's tightened down. Um, so now I just have to get the uh, actual valve cover back on and then it's completely finished. So let me get that back on real quick and then we'll be, we'll be all set for the day. So give me just a second. All right, there we go. Cover's back on. It's nice and tucked under there. You can see it coming out of the back of the cover back there. Um, like I said, it clears up all the wires that are all hanging by here. Uh, I will have to shorten up this power wire still along with this one, um, just so they're not all laid like that in the engine bay. And then also the actual connection for the coil harness, I will have to tuck out of the way here and probably zip tie just so it stays away from the exhaust. But other than that, it is tucked away, um, away from anything that's gonna burn it right there. And then it also gives me room for the O2 sensors, well, the wide band and then the O2 sensor. So as far as this side of the engine bay, this is basically done aside from those power cables, but well, and I got to delete the secondary air pump wiring because obviously I don't have it anymore. But other than that, that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, um, follow us on Instagram, dad by garage official and Facebook, just dad by garage. Um, and then have yourself a happy Thanksgiving.